Kiribadella region on New South Wales' south coast is a marine mecca. Literally meaning land of many waters, the Yurubadella is particularly appealing to anglers with great fishing options in the estuaries, beaches and offshore. The northern gateway to the Yurubadella is Batemans Bay, where the magnificent Clyde River and the Pacific Ocean converge. And today, that's where we'll focus our efforts. The Clyde River is unchecked, meaning it has no dams making it one of only a few natural flowing river systems remaining on the New South Wales coast. Over 95% of the catchment for the Clyde River runs through National Park, with minimal impact from farming or urban activity. So the all-important riparian vegetation flourishes. All of this combines to make the Clyde River one of the cleanest and most pristine rivers in Eastern Australia. Add to that the removal of professional netting and it's easy to see why the Clyde is such a great fishery. On this trip, we're fishing the river post-flood, with powerful flows of freshwater moving quickly from the mountains to the ocean, ultimately creating rough conditions for boating and fishing at the river's entrance. Geez, Pete, we planned for a couple of weeks to go out and smack the squid. We did. But we, it's, not, it's not a thing we're going to no, do today, is it? No, mate, it's a bit rough out there, as you can see. So if in doubt, don't go out. Yeah. We've got plenty of places up here that we can play with, mate. Yeah, I'd rather be safe. It's been a little bit of fresh water in the system, but we know it well. Yep. Just gonna look around and see if we can find where the fish are biting today, and uh, it's all part of the adventure. It is, and yeah. I reckon we've got a good chance, my friend. I feel a lot more comfortable being safe too. Let's do yeah. it. I'm fortunate to be fishing the Clyde today with my old mate, Peter Dugan, from South Coast Estuary Charters. He knows the Yurubadella's estuaries better than most especially the Clyde. There's a good variety of fish here on the Clyde. You can come around the mouth here. You can see the bridge up there in the background and um, flick around plastics. So I've got a soft vibe on here and you'll pick up variety, flathead, brim, tailor, sometimes jewfish if you're lucky. There you go. Gotcha. That's a, an atomic semi-hard vibe. Great for, great for flatties and all sorts of things. I had about 60 species on that lure so far, Pete, but there you go. A beautiful dusky flatty on the Clyde River on a Picture perfect morning. Not sure what that is. A little Sophie. Good work. Do you know what the best thing about this is? Friends of mine and locals have been telling me how many little Jew fish like this are in the system. Some are half this size, but people are catching them. And that's a sign that's been a, a really good spawning event. They haven't been netted and the system's making a comeback. Peter, yeah, there's literally that. thousands of these in the system at the moment, Robin. It's great value. Yeah, yeah they, they're, they're going to get big way. in you know, three, four years. Of course, he's way too small and the size of them. Yep. Let's get him oh, straight back, okay. hey? Yep. There we go. The floodwaters have triggered some other river dwellers to make an appearance. Strangely, this feral pig looks like he could make the Olympic swim team. The things you see. We, we just saw a pig cross the river. <laughs> oh, is, it, is that a regular thing here, Peter? No, never <laughs> seen it before in my life. That's insane. It, you know, if we didn't get that on camera, no one would believe us. Uh, that's pig. exactly right. No, they wouldn't. Well, pigs can fly, but they can swim too, mate. base for exploring the surrounding villages, national parks, beaches and waterways of the Yurubadella is Batemans Bay. Plenty of great accommodation options in the Yurubadella and I love a good holiday park like this one, the big four Batemans Bay Beach Resort. Great cabins, close to town, stacks of stuff for the kids to do and it's right on the bay. Besides fishing, there's lots of things to do while you're visiting the Yurubadella. Discover some of Australia's finest unspoiled beaches. Explore the stunning national parks and forests. Feed a giraffe. Or meet the crew at Mogo Zoo. Or maybe try a round of golf. If you want to take a break from the fishing and spoil yourself a little bit, how about this place, the Club Catalina? A full-on 27-hole championship golf course that's nestled amongst a beautiful Aussie bush here. Great cafes, lunches and dinners, 
very affordable for the whole family and a real community based spirit here too. Check it out, I always do when I'm in the Uruvidala. Sensational. And while you're at Club Catalina, make sure you try their superb seafood basket. It's delicious. Now we've wet your appetite, you can find out more about the Yerubadella Coast at yerubadella.com.au. Back on the river and we're motoring slowly, as a river post flood can be a dangerous prospect for boaters. If you can notice there, Rob, all these logs that are coming down, especially after these big rains that we've just had, mm -hmm. and everything gets washed down through the uh, river, and it's very dangerous, so yeah, it does pay to take your time. You hit one of them at speed, you can flip oh. the boat, damage your motor, and, you know, be in a lot of trouble. And hence the reason why we're wearing these as well. I was going to say, especially if you're on your own, but by law, get them on, yeah. fall in, you're safe. In variable conditions like this, it pays to think about how a fish would react to the changing river system. You've really got to understand the tides. Um, out in the middle there, that water is really racing and a lot of fish don't want to be near. If you can find headlands like this that make the current swirl or have a rocky ledge, that gives a place for the fish to rest out of the current. That's where they live. And then when the tide slackens off, they come out to feed. And you normally catch them as they come out to feed or when they come back. Um, the technique I'm using is I'm hopping soft plastics across the bottom, a little one to five pound rod there, a little atomic prom, a uh, quarter ounce jig head, and basically, you need to be able to cast up current, okay? Straight up current so you don't get a belly in the line. And sometimes it takes 20, 30 seconds to get down. You don't want too heavy a jig head because it's unnatural. When it hits the bottom, you need to lift it and drop it and just softly lift it over the bottom like that. When the tide slackens off, um, the fish will move out to feed, but you want to be there an hour either side of the slack tide and you're in with a red hot chance. Paying attention to detail will most often reap rewards. <laughs> you are, mate? Yeah. And it's got a bit of weight too. Oh, beauty. A few head shakes there. So now you can see in the time that we've been here, the current's changed and picked up already. There's little windows of opportunity here along this river. Because the tide flows for six hours pretty hard, it'll eddy or it'll, you know, it'll spin around in one spot or back up in another. And if you can find those little slack pockets, it really narrows the chase down. It's a heavy fish, mate. Yeah, it is. And that tide, look at the tide since we started through. here. It's like three knots. If you if you jumped in here, you wouldn't you wouldn't swim back to the boat. Good good reason to have these on, by the way. So I'm, I'm not going too hard, Pete, because like with you know, 10 pound leader, I don't very often go over 15. If it's if it is a big flat in, it's got it in its gob. Oh, here's Lita. Yeah, that's that's a good sign. She's up off the bottom, which is the main thing. I'm I'm thinking it's almost definitely a flathead, but you just you just never know. Hey. Oh, look at the size <laughs> of this. She's a big one. She's a good fish, Rob. Can we drop back in the current a little bit at all? Yeah. Pete, that's, yep. I'm really struggling against that current. Oh <laughs> yes! What a great fish. That's a crocodile. Wow. Oh. And a classic, well done, a mate. classic, thank you, Pete, a classic Clyde River one. Look how thick they are through the shoulders there. Look at the condition. Oh, that's so good. Now, female. Definitely yeah. female over 60, so, yep. Let's get her back in the water real quick. Under the belly, give them good support so you're not just lifting them from the jaw alone. Yep. Look at the big girl. You. And look at that tide there flowing there oh, now. it's absolutely roaring. All right, everybody's happy. Away we go, big girl. You, there you go. Despite the water roaring past, the fish are still down deep. I'm on here, Rob. Looks half decent. Yeah, got a bit of weight there, Rob. Tell us a bit about your operation here, mate, while we play this fish out, because um, you, know, you, you can take three on board. You're, yes. you're based in Chiros, you do the whole year of Bedella, but yep. what's your clientele? I have a device clientele. I uh, get a lot of women. Um, come groups of uh, two or three. Yeah. Well, you get to fight a fish today, mate. Usually, yeah. you're usually you're Normally on the net. Normally, I'm on the other ah, side got of the net. Thank you very much for that. Oh, what a beautiful fish! Yeah, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Jig head there. This is a... just Maybe. goes to show you can get some good fish, especially after these big floods and stuff like that. Yeah. It's well, it's salty down the bottom. 
That's like a good 60 centimetre job. Beautiful fish will get her back in the water. Yes, Rob, absolutely. There you go, mate. Down there. There she goes. Yeah, she swam off nice and healthy, Rob. Yeah, it's good to see the big ones go back. It gives you that good feeling that yep. they're going to make lots of little ones for years to come. If you'd like expert guidance on fishing the Clyde River or any other estuary in the Yurubadella, contact Pete Dugan at southcoastestuarycharters.com.au. has improved, so today we're heading offshore with the local crew from Game On Charters. Hey, this Bay Marine Rescue, this is BM253. We are heading up to Doris. ETA will be about one o'clock, mate. This is Bay, this Bay Marine Rescue, have a good morning. Out. Their boat, the CB, is a 36-foot luxury cruiser that can target anything from marlin to snapper. Today we're chasing reef fish on jig para micro jigs. A little bit about the technique. Um, you might have seen people fishing for kings. They really rip the lure hard up and down really fast. So that's for your big silver pelagics that travel fast. But when you're reef fishing, the technique's a little bit different and it's varied too. Tell us a little bit about it, Anthony. Yeah, you can drop it to the bottom, keep it up off the bottom. You don't want to get it hooked up. But yeah, just little twitches like you're fishing for brim. Big lifts so you can fish with some real aggressive flicks as well. So mix it up. Yeah, so, this guy here, when you pull him up, he's got a little bit of a rock, but when you drop him, the, the, the slower, wide ones generally have a flutter to them, these jig paras do, and that gives a chance for reef fish to grab them. So play around with the technique and see what works. Went with that little bit more of aggressive action on this one and uh, immediately reacted. As you can see, these jigs work great on all species, and especially uh, snapper moeys. Been catching bait fish on them, everything. Yep. Right there. Oh, he grabbed it by the jig, yeah. See what he's done there? Because we're fishing light leader, 15 pound. So there you go. A nice snapper, here we go. Beautiful little knobby headed snapper there. And again, killing it on the head. It's, yep. it's what you're not trained to do. Everyone's used to having lures on the back, uh, hooks on the back of the lure, but they kill it on the head. And that's why I believe they take it for a squid every time. But um, yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Micro jigging is effective on lots of species, not just reef fish. Have we'll a hook up, mate. Shark's gonna get yours. Yeah, there's a shark sniffing around the boat. We'll see if we can beat. I lost one to a shark. I reckon it's gonna take yours, Robert. Yep. Oh, what have I got? Oh, you've got a... Uh... Oh, big tailor, yep. So I'm capable. Massive tailor. I'm capable of anything. <laughs> Normally get... I told Normally... you, I called it. Squid. Yep. There you go. He's hooked the squid on the jig, so... As soon as I hooked it up, I called squid. Calamari, so... Taylor, it's all happening here. Shark hanging around the boat. Great seafood for the table, but many fish we discard are also delicious and worthy of a taste test. I remember when I was a kid, my friends wouldn't eat squid. I mean, if you had a Greek or Italian background, you'd love it, but people now love calamari. These things are the same, slimy mackerel. Mm. Great, great example, aren't they? I mean, you, people don't consider them a table fish, right? That's right. It, um, they're a great alternative fish to, for the table. Um, in, in the case of slimies, um, take a couple of fillets off and put them in the smoker. Yeah, um, it's so, superb. Yeah, absolutely. I've had it before and they taste great like that. Eaten all over the world except here in Australia and a huge biomass of them, they fight well. And most importantly... They're sustainable, that takes the pressure off. Uh, our mainstream fish. What's some other good examples here on the south coast of fish that uh, people sh could be taking if they wanted to? Um, some alternative fish, you could probably look at sweep, um, yeah. pike, red rock cod. Yep. Um, probably those three for a start would yep. be uh, good alternatives that you can get some good meat off and uh, there's some good recipes out there that uh, make them very presentable for the table. Yeah, absolutely. It seemed like we were catching one fish after another. These micro jigs work amazingly well. But credit also has to go to the guys from Game On Charters, who put us onto the fish on just about every drop. Damien's on here, mate. Damien, you, this is your boat, Game On Charters. Yeah. What's your typical clientele here, mate? Um, mainly bottom bashing. Mm -hmm. We do do um, game fishing charters as well. Yep. Um, we do whale watching, dolphin watching. 
Oh, I love that. You do you do your boutique charters for your whale and dolphin watching too, which is great for families. Yeah, we also do like um, personalised um, like sunset cruises up the Clyde River in the afternoon. And yeah, there we go. There we go, nice little pinky. Oh, it's a good operation. You've got a beautiful, big, comfortable boat. You love it, don't you? That's great. It really is. <laughs> yeah, no. Good stuff. Game on Charters will get you hooked next time you're in the year of Adela. Find out more about booking your exciting day out on the water at gameoncharters.net.au. With no dams and a pristine catchment, the Clyde River is one of the cleanest waterways on Australia's east coast. And because of this, the river has become famous for its world-class oyster industry. I caught up with local farmer John Yanaris from Batemans Bay Oysters to get the lowdown on why they're so special. OK, so we've got here Pacifics. So these are your bigger ones? Yep, yep, and these are ready for market. You can see how nice and big these here are. They're massive. So these here are what we call a triploid. Yep. And um, we get... they're desexed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So when, when they spawn, they don't produce. Yep. Okay, so that's why we're allowed to grow them here in, in this estuary. Look, look at this oyster. Woo look at that. <laughs> look at that. Gets everyone excited. So your Pacifics are bigger. Yes. And some people like them yes. because they're so look big. That. That's That's magnificent. That is... A fantastic oyster. Yeah, it is. My favourite is the Bay Rock Oysters. Well, we're going to yep. grab some rock oysters here. And you can see the difference in the sizes. I mean, these here are lovely, good size yeah, that's, yeah, rock that's oysters. Size like, yeah. And um, people from New South Wales love the rock oyster. And they come out of such a beautiful, pristine system here. Look at that. Let's compare the two, mate, if you can just bring that. Look Big Pacific up next to the Batemans. But look at the difference in size there. Look at that. <laughs> there. And, and look, some people really like those big ones, but I prefer these guys. And I'm going to give this guy a taste because... Mm. Oh, mate. Tell me something. That freshness that you get now, you've, people can now get that at the restaurant or the, the co-op. How, mate? These oysters go out to processors in Sydney, um, pretty much all around Australia. So if you go to your fishmonger and you notice that they're um, shucking live oysters, yep. they are fresh as. They'd yeah. be probably no more than two days old. The beauty of the rock oyster, when you pull it out of the water, it's got up to 10 days uh, shelf life live, okay? So whether you open it today, or like we did now, or whether you open it in five days' time, it's still the same. And same at some of the top restaurants, they'll shuck them just before they exactly. serve them. So yeah. you're getting that. That's right. A lot of the good restaurants now are doing that. They're buying them live off the fishmongers and they're shucking them in the kitchen. So it's no different to what we're experiencing right here. The only difference is we're in the boat yeah. and they're not. John and his family have been farming oysters in the Clyde since he was a kid. He lives and breathes oysters. Normal people might have a pet dog or cat. Yes. But John's got pet oysters. Pet oysters. <laughs> Absolutely. Apparently they're really big. We're going to find out how big they are because I haven't seen them for like yeah. and this... six months now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Just watch yourself. Oh, a Fortescue. This fella here stings me. Yeah. The Aboriginals yeah. say that the sting will last until the tide turns. It shows how healthy the system is. Absolutely, it's, it's all in the estuary. So uh, the beauty about the, the Clyde River is we get a lot of fresh water that comes down and um, keeps the salinity a little bit low. And by having a low salinity, it actually sweetens the oyster. Yeah, right. So if you've got a high salinity, it's extremely salty yeah. and you'll find a strong zinky taste yeah, to yeah. the oyster. Uh, if it's a low salinity, you get that nice, sweet aftertaste. And that's why these, rock, uh, these uh, Pacific oysters taste really good here because of this estuary. It's all about the estuary. Right? Oh, the quality estuary. So, I mean, just look at the size. <laughs> it's like half a kilo. <laughs> I'm not saying come and take any of these pet oysters, but look at that. That'd be a meal, right? <laughs> and if you fancy some fresh oysters while you're on the river, pull the boat up to the Ray Street Oyster Shed. Hey, how are? Oh, thank, thank you. Here. Enjoy. Thanks, Nacy. Well, how good is this? Fresh Batemans Bay rock oysters. You can get a barista brewed coffee over there and 
we're relaxing out of the midday sun, waiting for the tide to turn and we'll hook back into the fishing. But in the meantime... Yeah. One appetite. Mm. They open them live every day, fresh out of the river. Oh. Mate, they are gorgeous. Of course, you can get there by road as well. Just another great thing to do while you're in Batemans Bay. On the water or on the land, there's so much to do in the year of Adela, you'll want to visit more than once. Find out more about the amazing things to do on the Yerubadala coast at yerubadala.com.au.